Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. We have a very special guest tonight. Please welcome on the first time on the podcast, filmmaker Rick Kosick. Wow. What's up, man? Thanks wow, for coming. I, really f- I feel the love on that behind the keys there. <laughs> I, that was great. <laughs> really? Yeah, I dig it. Yeah, I usually play s- the same chords. I, I try to do a little variety. I just I make it up on the spot. I dig it. How long have you been playing? I, you know, when I was little, like, you know, like all most Asian families, my, you know, Suzuki lessons, Suzuki piano lessons when you're a kid right. at Aussie's Musics in, in Poway. Um, but I didn't have a passion for it. Mm. It was kind of like, you're going to piano. Right. Yeah. It's not till later. You know who gave me that piano? Money Mark. Money Mark gave me that. Oh, yeah. Sad. Money. Yeah. I mean, shout out to Money Mark. He's been on. The podcast several times. Shout out to the Beastie Boys. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're uh, uh, rest in peace, MCA. But uh, yeah, Money's got a whole. I mean, I don't even know how many pianos he has. How'd you How'd you let him make friends with him? Uh, my brother took me to. Uh, we were getting Korean food one night, and we we're halfway there uh, in K Town, and he he had received a text. He's like, "Damn, I gotta do this guy's podcast." I'm like, "Who?" He's like, just come with me, dude. We'll go eat after. I didn't even know what a podcast was. And it was uh, David Cho, uh, DVD essay. Oh, wow. Back in the day, it was a David Cho and Asa, Akira's mm-hmm. podcast. And that's how I met him and how I met Money Mark and the rest of the cast there. And that's how that actually got me familiar with what a podcast was. I didn't want to do it. I just. Did you just get the bug at that instant when you're like, oh, this is cool you know yeah i showed him respect i just want to shake his hand and and i actually placed the seat near the the entrance and i let them do their thing he called me over like 15 minutes in hey bring your brother over here and so i, I sat in Austin's seat she was gone that week and i just sat there and uh that's how it all i didn't even know what it was i, I thought it was weird that p- you're filming people talk like and look at you today yeah, we're you had this four. amazing <laughs> studio. <laughs> this is not. This is this is what I have now. Yeah, this is the dope studio. Do you like? I mean, this is. Uh, I like it. I mean, this was just like, it, it started just literally against this door with the camera facing the door, and then I'm like, that's how it starts. And then after a few, I was like, I'll just put stickers up. I just cut kind of. A, I like it. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, you, I asked you something because uh, it was raining. I had to meet you out front. And then right when you stepped in here, because uh, I had just seen something on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a it's a movie called Don't Look Up. And yeah, and I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, it was like... I've You're the first, one of the first. Everyone I've talked to, oh, dude, I loved it. Yeah, I hated it, man. Why? Can you tell me the reasons why? I just, I felt confused if it's if it's a uh, dramedy or was it supposed to be comedy or... It was just all over the place, and then by the time we got to the Ariana Grande concert, that's the full song. I'm checked out. Yeah, that's just filler. <laughs> that's just bullshit. I'm not saying she's a bad artist. I think she's an amazing singer. But when I'm watching a movie, I don't want to watch an entire song in a performance. It was a lot. Of, it was too much. And not only that, the song was the actually the title of the movie, but yeah. the opposite. She's like, look up. Like, she- it was just, I don't know. I just, I didn't vibe with it. And yeah. I watch a lot of movies and I've seen a lot of great films this year and that was not one of them. Um, did you like the premise at least? Like the post, like the apocalyptic That's what drew me, drew me in. Yeah. So but without I- ruining, without ruining it, can you tell the viewers and listeners what, what initially the movie, the, the narrative, the main theme, go ahead. It's the end of the world. So a comet is approaching yeah. the earth. But I did like Leonardo DiCaprio's character. I like Jonah Hill. Jonah Jonah was funny too, though. Yeah, don't, don't you think so? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so. I like I like his work. I, let's just put it that way. Yeah. But. Um. So, on the f- flip end of that, you said you saw some good. Like, what are some of the good movies you saw this year? Right now, I'm in the middle of watching this documentary. It's I know it's probably I'm late to the party, but it's about Laurel Canyon. Really? And it's a documentary. It's on Apple Plus right now. I think it's been on some other platforms, but uh, 
it's like the whole history of Laurel King. And I'm just super infatuated with the history and rock and roll in the late sixties, early seventies yeah. in the Canyon. And, and, uh, I also see licorice pizza. Oh, that's the, Paul Thomas Anderson's new movie. Yeah, uh, definitely. The, ch- yeah. Cause I, we talked about that at Jeremiah's party. Yeah, it's a really fun film. And, mm-hmm. uh, the French dispatch. Okay. What's that about? Uh, that's another amazing film. Um, foreign. No, no. Okay. Um, um Paul, yeah. Oh, Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson. Wes yeah. Anderson. Sorry, I yeah, can't yeah, remember yeah, everyone's yeah. name. Um, are you a Todd Solondz fan at all? I know he hasn't made a movie in a while. I don't know who that is. Uh, Welcome to the Dollhouse, Happiness. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that, that's, that's back that's, in the day. That's like 80s, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, is he still with us? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he is. I mean, I don't mean to be yeah. too blunt, but, you know. Um, When I've... Because I've known about you for years and years and years. So when I saw you at Jeremiah Jeremiah's party, I got super hyped up. I'm like, oh, there he is. Yeah. Because yeah. I met you. I don't know if you remember when I how I first met you. I we met, met at you. the comedy store. Yes. Mm-hmm. That was a weird night because I didn't know what that was. I'm like, well, what is it? What I didn't know kill- what Kill Tony was. Yeah, it's just a fun. It was a fun podcast. You know? Yeah. So Kill Tony was a podcast. I know he moved to uh, Austin, but it's uh, you know they have a panel on stage, and they it's kind of like um, a potluck where they grab people's they, names and they do a thirty second 30, comedy uh, set. No, they do like a minute, a minute, and, and then this follows with a ten minute interview, sort of how it goes depending on the interview. Mm-hmm. It could get really intense. It could be really funny. Mm-hmm. And then can you, because we talked a little bit about your kind of like you discovering that. Do you remember that night you're like, yeah, I was in the OR at the comedy store or something? Well, so originally I was going, I started going to the comedy store because an old friend of mine used to work there. Mm-hmm. And he told me about the roast battle. And I started going and I was the only person, you know, I didn't know anyone. So I would just go stand in the back. Mm-hmm. Watching, you know, the show down and at that conception was fire. It was the best live show I've ever watched. And Ooh. Jeremiah was a part of it. He was the wave. Mm-hmm. And well, what, can you de- can you describe what the wave was? The wave was like three guys or four. And they would when a joke really hit hard, mm-hmm. they would all react, you know, crazy and do different things. And like to, you know, ex- you know, help accentuate, the, you know, the joke and. Mm-hmm. Make sure the audience knew that that was funny. Yeah, so it was kind of like an impromptu, Imp- imp- yeah, improv, and they would act out some of the stuff, some funny things. Yeah, you know that would help you know make the joke land even harder. Yeah, and and it, to, to me, it's like I felt like I was watching a uh, a wrestling kind of punk rock concert taking place in a little room at the comedy store. Yeah. And what are some, cause you mentioned punk rock and like all that and wrestling, like, like you grew up like me in the, from the eighties. Yes. Then? Yeah. I grew up going to punk rock shows and stuff like that. Like what are, do you remember some of the, some of the bands that do you see like, like oh, black I've, flag or dead Kennedys? Or I saw, so I saw the entire, like at, in the late eighties, the entire English movement that came through Los Angeles, like discharge subhumans. Mm-hmm. Um, the addicts, uh, mm-hmm. what else? Uh, Misfits, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. GBH at the Santa Monica Civic when Jeez. they first played there. Jeez, Louise. So what was that? Eighty two, like I forgot. I want to say eighty five. Eighty five. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was just exciting time to go to shows that only cost seven bucks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, seven bucks for a show. <laughs> yeah, at like some abandoned church somewhere. Maybe something like that, or at the Santa Monica Civic. Wow. You know, and then so did you grow up in Southern California, in in Venice or no? I grew up in Orange County. Okay, and uh, so I grew up skateboarding and then mm-hmm. getting into punk rock music. And I remember, you know, when we were kids in high school, that there would be punk rock shows in backyards. So there's like a whole scene, you know, like you'd go see these punk bands mm-hmm. back then. That would be like they put out flyers, yeah. This and this this band's gonna play in this backyard. It's like crazy. It's yeah. kind of like comedy today. Yeah, they have backyard shows. But, but back you, then, they go music. to they go to Kinkos and make the flyers. Yeah, they make the flyers themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They do it that's, all. That's cool. That's why I got really excited when I was start seeing these backyard comedy shows. Be like, yeah, I know what this. this yeah, is yeah, I like this, nostalgic, you know? right? Yeah, kind of. How did you get into? Because I I know you. I mean, you're doing filmmaking now, but I've no I I, I knew you. F- I discovered you through Big Brother and skateboarding. Sure. I'm like, oh, that's that's his picture. Like, how did you get into skating in that whole scene? Well, I mean, 
it started, I guess, you know, as a kid, you know, I skated going to the parks when there was uh, skate parks mm -hmm. and that all went away, got into punk rock. And then I was like, I realized like this is going nowhere. So I got back into skateboarding. Yeah. Was this in the 90s now? Like uh, late 80s? No, no, late 80s. Yeah. I, and I was running around with a pack of dudes or just going nowhere yeah <laughs> <laughs> what kind of like burnout dudes well just you know they're doing drugs and yeah. getting wasted and so i was like i'm ducking out and just got back on the board and, yeah and it, the skateboard kind of took me in a new direction and i say skateboarding saved my life you know so it really did i think so yeah which well, just for the fact that you got into it and didn't go the other way yeah yeah and i look back and all those other dudes got back got into heroin and death and so you know so yeah. it's like so I got back into skating, and then one thing led to another, and I re reconnected with some other friends from school, and like just going to ramps and street skating and messing around, and yeah. and it just kind of took that route, and um, got into photography, and then they just kept pursuing it, even though I was working like graveyard shift jobs. Yeah, I've I've done that too. You know, and so yeah. I would just like do what I had to do to hustle yeah. my what I wanted to really do with my life, yeah. and I just follow that instinct and it eventually led me where I was I'm at today like how did you link like that's interesting how did you link up with did you just meet people to, along the journey your journey sure you know because back then there would be more gatherings like trade shows oh, wait, do, wait some people might not know what that is what a, was a trade show a trade show is where uh, <laughs> <laughs> the action sports retailer show where all the different industries come together to sell their stuff yeah. And so everyone would go down There's the companies, a right? Like yeah, skate, skate companies. Comp clothing companies, bikini companies. Yeah. It's everything. Surf companies. So they'll be, you know, mostly held down in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And you go down there and you gather around and meet people. And, you know, and, you know, one thing leads to another. And then you, I don't know. It's just like how things work. You know, it's like yeah. how life works. You know, like it's not all just through Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So back then you actually had to go somewhere and communicate yeah. and like interact with people. Yeah, shake hands, smile, yeah. wave to the audience, kiss the babies. You right. Know? Like, now is this true? Do you, was is I've heard of this because I'm not a, obviously a part of that industry. But is the skateboarding industry? It's is it like hella clicky? Like, I think like, kind of like yeah. I I can see that. I you know I just. Uh, it's kind of like the cool, you know, like in high school, right? You had you like the. I cool think kids. everything is is high school, yeah, right? Right. You know, even when I went to college, I noticed it's like, oh, like this is even worse because there's fraternities and sororities and this yeah. group and that group. So I mean, you just I think it's just best to you know if you're just kind of level headed and cool and you can just kind of divert through all the bullshit, right? And then what 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 were some of the who are the, some of the skaters you looked up to like like or video parts that like like you were watching during. Those I mean, the, anything Pal Peralta put out back in the day, right? <laughs> yeah. Animal Search for Animal Chin. I have the VHS of Animal Chin. Yeah, yeah, I mean, those somewhere. videos were awesome. Yeah. It was like more of a movie to me. Like, sure. So it, shout out to Stacey Peralta. for. He was great. Yeah. He captured something really special. And gosh, I can't even. I wonder how many times I've actually watched one of those videos. There's yeah. So Search lot. for Animal Chin. What were some of the other ones? Uh, Public Domain. Public Domain. Yeah. And... Uh, I'm not, you're gonna have to look it up. I don't remember all the names, but those are just a couple of off the top were pretty cool. And then I, I and then we grew up like I think we got it. Obviously, I got into it later than you did. But uh, remember four one one video magazine? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So there's those videos they put bi monthly or yeah. every couple months. Four, it yeah. was a, I didn't watch all of them, but you know it served its purpose at the time. Yeah. Um. Now, how did you like link up with like all the jackass dudes like Bam and? Uh, Steve O and all those dudes. Well, Big Brother was a very collective magazine. Yeah, describe to because uh, that that's how I discovered. So, it. for those who don't know anything, I'm talking about. There's a documentary on Hulu called Dumb. So, what was it called? Dumb. Okay. So you can circle back, go to Hulu, look it up. It and tells it's about a whole. Big Brother. It's a documentary about the Big Brother magazine. But I'll tell you the story. Go ahead. Uh, you know we're our is crazy ensemble of characters. You know, and uh, we're obviously if you've read the magazine, it's pretty much what Jackass became, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, so we had Wee Man working for us mm -hmm. and we had Steve-O was another character out there that somehow gravitated towards us. Mm -hmm. And we had Jeff, me, Sean, and then Dimitri on the East Coast. 
Knoxville was Johnny writing Knoxville, was yeah. writing stories for us. And uh it just sort of became um we started filming a pilot. Really? Yeah, the pilot. And uh before the first movie. Oh, yeah, before the TV show. Before the TV. Oh, it was a TV show on MTV or something? Yeah, there was a huge I forgot about that. It's a huge hit on TV yeah. on MTV. So, and I think that, you know, Jeff and PJ, or Johnny Knoxville to everyone else, mm-hmm. brought everyone together, and, and Bam was doing his CKY videos, so I guess he just, you know, communicated, like, hey, we're, we're going to make this TV show, and why don't you guys be a part of it? So, uh, the forces came together, and Johnny Knoxville, Jeff Tremaine, and Spike Jones went around and pitched the show. Failed a few times. Yeah, I forgot Spike wasn't Spike Jones was a part yeah, of that? executive producer. Oh, I forgot about that. And uh, and eventually landed it at MTV and became this huge phenomenon. I mean, it was huge. I guess I mean, it was. It's hard because I'm inside the middle of the of the of the cluster. Yeah, but you know, outside of it, looking in. Yeah, I would hear stories like yeah. my friends from Hawaii were like, "Yeah, we would have these big viewing parties and every really." Friday, for right now, we had 30 people watching the show. I'm like, what? Viewing really? party. It's yeah. like a UFC event or something. There, yeah. Yeah. Except we're watching a bunch of dumb fucks. So did it? So it just organically happened like that? Well. Like, how did you meet those guys individually? Like, all at once? Like, how did that work out? It just kind of fell into place, you know? Yeah. Because uh, I was the photo editor for the magazine, and so Jeff was the art director. Mm-hmm. And so we started making our own videos, and... Uh, <sighs> So, and that kind of just sort of happened, you know, over time, you know? Yeah, yeah. It just goes to show, man. You just got to follow, you know, what's in front of you and just kind of enjoy the journey. Yeah. There's no finish line. I've said this cliche many times. You just got to enjoy the journey because there's going to be little drops of gold nuggets, you know, like, oh, today was awesome, you know? Yeah, yeah, but there's a lot of downtime, too, or like... And whatever. Years where nothing... That's not true. Years, I don't know. Look, we're having fun right now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no. You know what? Even with this, it's like I, I didn't expect anything, but like I'm like, what, four and a half, five? You know, I, it's still Dude, fun to me. Like, you're, I, to... You're, I, I researched before I committed. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for research. Yeah. And you are you got a pretty solid fan base, and it's cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more, it's not like mainstream, like, you know, like my brother has a mainstream one. Yeah, His your brother's, friends. he's pretty successful. Yeah, he's pretty. But you're under the Dude, tiger. he just had Tony Hawk on his. I know. <laughs> Can you imagine you I was to- tripping. I'm like, he's like, dude, Tony Hawk came over. I go, what? So <laughs> I met your brother years ago. Okay, so Bef- I want to hear the, I think about it, and I want to hear this story for sure. Because I met him before he was uh, a comedian. What? Yes. No. He, that must have been 92 or 93. He's really good buds with Laban Fidius. Dude, hold up. Let me let's give Laban a, <laughs> some love right here. Laban was Dude, badass. Dude, shout out to the homeboy Laban Fidius. Yeah, caught clean. Yep. juggling, great skater. He had two covers on Big Brother, and I shot oh, one of them. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. People don't know about Laban. Let's give Laban some love, man. He, he he did his part in his time in skateboarding. And he was like probably one of the most creative dudes of that era because he was always doing something. He was gnarly too, dude. Yeah, he was a good skater. He but had a yet, front side flip. Like he'd skate pools and stuff. He was awesome. Yeah. And he's super creative. Not yeah, with art and like he yeah, yeah he, he got did. into direct filming and editing yeah, and directing. Yeah, he's, he's badass. Yeah, so he used to skate for a company called Invisible. Mm, yeah, I think Invisible. it was one of uh, Blockhead Skate. Blockhead and I then Invisible. Yeah, yeah, it, those you know, two. How, yeah, but and, and he could Dog, juggle. And I think Dogtown too. Yeah, him and um, Wee Man and uh, who's the other one? Um, God, I forgot the other. Eric Dressen. No, it was this other. It was three of them. God, you know what? Oh, Preston A. Cup. Yeah, Preston. It was those three at that one time. At that yeah, time, yeah, it was them. Yeah, that's interesting. How so, do I remember that? <laughs> I don't. I don't. Well, you're probably in cycle. You're in I know a lot of things. You know a lot. I don't just don't remember everyone's name. But you you just came up with that like on the fly. Yeah. So it's like if yeah. these memories are firing up. That's again. so crazy. Getting so, the engine going again. It's, it's just cranberry juice. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you met Laban and my brother at the same time in San Diego. No, he was up here in Los Angeles. They were they were buds hanging out. And yeah. uh, didn't they have a skate shop together? Yeah, it was called. So shout out to Clickstow. Um, I, I he was my roommate at the time. It was called Juvie. 
Yeah, and there was a ramp in the back. Yeah, I actually sandblasted that place before he even got any um, all of the the product in. Mm. I was there. I was. I worked for him. Oh, cool. So I was like, yeah. I shot pictures on that ramp of Pat Duffy for his interview. Of the Juvie ramp. Mm-hmm. Damn. So that was like early. That was early two thousand. I was just thinking about that in my drive over here. I was like, gosh, yeah. I remember that. Where yeah, that was, it was near that Seven Eleven. You know, it was like yeah, 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 the yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, that's so. So, how did you meet? How did you know about that place? I mean, in skateboarding, everyone talks. You know what's. But what it was such an underground, real underground. No, but that's place. how skating was. If you were in it, you knew everything about it and what was going on and what ramps were around and you know just going to the spots and keeping it cool and not blowing it up too hard. So you met Laban Cleekstow, my brother, during that time. I probably knew Laban first before those two guys. Right, and then what was your first kind of like impression of my brother? Hmm. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> hmm. I like that. Rea- I like that reaction. Let me think about this. Yeah. No, he was a nice guy. He was just more shy and reserved. And what? Yeah, That's not like a- he is today. Oh, he was more real interesting. He was a different person back then. Yeah, he. I think those guys kind of opened him up. Sure, like out of a shell. Especially oh, yeah. like Wee Man and Laban, they would they would fuck with him. You think so? Yeah, like I remember one of the parties they threw a birthday party. They they hired these um, dude strippers to give him a lap dance. It was <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a surprise. <laughs> Do you remember Laban? Where he, he used to live in Echo Park, that house in Echo Park somewhere. And I just remember, hey, dude, we got a we got your present for you. And then they, it was like they like blindfolded oh, him. Oh, that is brutal. And I just remember we men and Laban, they're laughing and they're like, all right, come out. And then they, they like, oh they gave him a God. lap dance. Yeah. What, did he like it? Um, you, you have to ask him about that. Okay, if he ever he, invites he me was, on his he podcast, went, he went along with it. Uh, I it he had joke. no choice. He had yeah. no choice. And you know what's funny too? Because they try to get him to skate too. My brother was into skating, but he never skated. Skated. I mean, he, he definitely appreciates it, and that's it's all that matters. Yeah, I just remember like just living with him in Cleekstow. He would like get the new rally, like the Vans rally. He's like, you know dude, was, I got you, the new rally. You know, it's so weird. I was watching the new Burt cast tonight. Yeah, and he had Tony Hawk and Jason Ellis. I noticed that. What is going on? So they are, are they doing like because they just did Tiger Belly. They're trying to do their rounds so they can get you know more viewers on their platform of channel. Why are those two doing it together? I don't know. They have their own podcast together. Oh, they so Tony and it's called Hawk versus Wolf. Or I, I didn't know that. And they have a, it's on a YouTube channel, and they have a, a podcast. So they got they're going, and they had they had a couple of really good guests. They had Rodney Mullen, Christian Soy. Christian stories are in, they're insane. They're like. like well, wow. tell tell the viewers and listeners who that is, because uh, a lot of them might. I think he was a view- rock star back then. He was a rock star. I'm sure your viewers know who Krishna is. Some are. of them might know. They're a little younger. Some of them might not know. Well, get get your, get your pen and paper out and start taking notes. Mm-hmm. Are you taking notes? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. The whole thing I am. Yeah, and uh, he was the legendary skateboarder, and went down the wrong road. Got he got into lot. drugs, didn't he? Major drugs. I don't. You should watch the episode. It's pretty intense. What he talks about. And there's a documentary. I think about it. Him too, right? Like, didn't he like go? I don't know if there's a documentary. He wrote or a book. something on YouTube, right? Some there, mini documentary or something. Yeah, I I don't remember it, so I'm not gonna give any props. Isn't he a pastor now, or like, isn't he? In I the think church? he's 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 religious, and I think there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that if it makes him happy and. Or I'm more power to him. It was positive. It was a positive move. Hey, man, I'm all about positivity. Yeah. I, I, I'm tired of the negative. Even though yeah. I bashed, don't look up here. Yeah, yeah. We might have to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, but it's just from the heart. Can I can I throw another one out there that that I didn't like worse than that? What's that? M. Night Shyamalan's new one. I didn't see it. Oh, it's called The Old. I see the old there. I, I My know. brother and I, he texted me at four in the mor- four in the morning the other night because I think I might have request. I, I'm like, you should check it out because I was I was about to, and he got so mad at me. He's like, dude, this is the worst fucking movie I've ever seen, dude. Like, he was lost his mind. <laughs> Your brother is a different person these he days. He likes movies though. People don't know he's really into movies. Like he like we're into Kurosawa's movie. Like we're mm. into movies, movies. Right. Yeah. 
but he and because a lot of M Night's movies we enjoyed. Signs, Unbreakable, Six Sense. Mm-hmm. I could go down the list. I didn't like Lady in the Water. I didn't like that one, Lady in the Water, or whatever that one. But some of them were good. Like none of these movies, I even know what you're talking about. Signs. So I didn't uh, see yeah. it. You what? what? Is how old is that? Oh God, it's old. it's like somewhere in the like, 80s. Early. No, 90s? this is 2000s. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a there's a time frame when I was really busy working on Big Brother. I didn't go to any movies because I was too busy. You were that busy? Uh, seven days a week, man. It was a grind. Did they have like their own offices and stuff? Oh, like, sure. But, yeah. you know, I'm constantly out shooting, getting the articles done. And I had no time for anything other than Big Brother. Jeez. How long? Wait, let's go back to that. Like, how long were you working for the, the magazine? I was there about 11 years. 11 years? Yeah. Wow. And, you know, and the thing I, the biggest lesson I learned from it, I feel, is you got to take time off and like enjoy like a Sunday here and there and chill out. And I never got enough of those and it fried me. Jeez, and then it was that. Where do you basically lived at the office? <laughs> yeah, and in my car, and and uh, out in the field wait, shooting wait, wait, photos. Wait, you, your, you lived in your car as a figure of speech. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so I was constantly just hustling, trying to get photos, and like, yeah, and there was like we would work late at night, you know, That's and crazy. you know, because I was like helping scan the photos, help shooting. The, uh, at one point, I was like shooting the photos, scanning them into the computer, cleaning them up. Selling the ads. Oh, uh, what was what your it, role? What was your title then? What was, it was photo what, editor, but photo still, editor, but that but entailed still, a lot of things. But we all had to wear many hats making the magazine oh, in the geez. beginning. That's just the way it was, you know. Yeah. And that's just, you know, it goes to show with anything you do, you're gonna do that. You're gonna do it, whatever it takes. Yeah, whatever it yeah. takes, you know. So you get hired for something, you're gonna do more than one thing. Right. Yeah. When did that evolve into like filmmaking and like? I think, that other thing. I think, you know, when we started making the videos, that's when I really started getting excited. My first one was the, my first, like, full video part for Big Brother was with the guy, Johnny Lee County. He had the yellow Devo suit on the mm-hmm. cover. I don't I'm a fan of Devo, by the way. Me too. Yeah. Great man. And I made this video. He, this guy from South Central. Who, so he was he a gang, was he a, like, gang affiliate? No, not at all. Oh, okay. And it's just this nice Husky black dude, mm-hmm. you know, and super good at skateboarding. And he tried to get sponsored for from Prime. I remember Prime skateboarding. Yeah. So and then Mark Abba was like, you guys, you got to check this guy out. He's he's perfect for Big Brother. And yeah. I, I was like, whoa, who is this guy? Yeah. But I had to get the courage to go there because he lived in the worst cut of South Central. Like it was like there was in the hood, like hood, hood, like gang, like there was hardcore. Games. Like hardcore. so I had to figure out. <laughs> So I had to figure out. <laughs> and then you had to figure out, how am I going to drive in this neighborhood? So I figured, like, if I'm going to get in and out, I'm going to have to go by myself. At night? Early in the morning. <laughs> That's the only way I went and shot this guy. I got, up, got there early in the morning, did what I had to do, bolt. Because, man, if you Everyone's went at asleep. night, man. Everyone's asleep. Not only that, but if you went at night, they oh, would have said, like, where, what, where, what are you doing? Like, who are you? Yeah, exactly. So I just figured that out. Shot the, his interview went great, and I'm like, all right, I gotta go back now to go shoot for the video part. Yeah. So I had to go a few times. It did a few times, but yeah. you know, it worked out fine. And he so he a, was a street skater as well. Yeah, he yeah. had all these great street street tricks. Street tricks. Like he was, he was solid. His part is on my YouTube channel. Can we can we shout out your YouTube channel? Right yeah, now? Rick Cossack Films at YouTube. Please follow me today. I'd appreciate it. Rick Cossack Films. Uh, subscribe today. Subscribe. Yeah, uh, all, every like button you see of every video, video I posted. And then, what is that per- specific video called? What was the guy's name again? Johnny Lee County. Ja- Johnny Lee County. Yeah, County. C U N T Y. Yeah. Like co- a county, like, like city, a county. county. I, Johnny Lee County. John, John, Johnny Lee. Yeah. Is, yeah. County. Is he still around? Is he still involved with skateboarding? I heard, I went to this punk show not too long ago, and the guy who works at some skate shop down at, uh, I think it's South Bay Skates, mm-hmm. he's like, yeah, man, here you want Johnny Lee's number? And uh, I was like, oh, sure. I mean, <laughs> I don't yeah. know. And I'm like, wow. I go, he's still with us. That's crazy. I reached, How, he must be like in his 40s or 50s. Yeah, right? I called him like because uh, I thought maybe we were going to interview him for the uh the Big Brother documentary. Yeah, yeah. It didn't pan out. But he was like, hey, Rick. And he didn't sound healthy. Yeah. And I was like, ooh. You know, I was like kind of concerned for the guy. And he's like, yeah, all my family's gone. And I was like, whoa. 
Uh, things happen. With things time. happen, you yeah, know. And he was still here. And is he still in, the, uh, in South Central? Like, I think he lives in Long Beach. Okay, works at Target somewhere down there. And okay, I last I heard uh, that'd be an interesting documentary just on him. Maybe no, nah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. What were some of the tricks? Like you, like, he did everything. He was. He was ho hos. Just Wait, like, hold up, let's back up a little bit. Wait, hold up. <laughs> yeah. You got. You have to explain what. So a ho. They might think that's a, so, like a so, snack. Or so, something. You, <laughs> <laughs> like some yeah, kind of hostess like, snack. Hostess like yeah. Twinkie defense here. So you do like a street plant, you know, and then you. you take well, they, the board. you have to describe what a street. They might not know what a street plant. A is. A street plant is when you grab your board, and you put your hand down, yeah. and you jump up upside down. Would well, be upside down. It's right? kind of like a break dancing move almost. It with almost a, is. With the with skateboard. With the skateboard, and you hold the board. So yeah. And then he puts the board on his shins. And he puts both hands on the sidewalk, and then like he's gra- doing a handstand. Like he's doing a handstand, and then he goes back up and grabs the board, puts it back under his feet, and s- skates away. Yeah. This guy was good. <laughs> Dude, how come? Wait, you know what's interesting about skateboard because it's evolved so much. Right. How come they don't bring that back? I think it's like bonelesses and oh, that. Oh, it's there. It's <laughs> is it really there? Slappies are there. People are doing. Okay, something. you're right. You're right. And that's it's they there. Came, that came back. I mean, yeah. not everyone's trying to do the nar. Yeah, yeah. Not everyone's um, trying to compete with Nija. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on? Hold up. I'm in Utah. I mean, okay. So you brought it up. What are your thoughts on it being in the Olympics? Skateboarding in the Olympics. I think it's great. How do you judge that though? Because I I was just talking to my buddy about this. Uh, we were having Mexican food, and he, like, how do you judge? Because it, I it's an art form, right? What you say? As long as you're staying on the board and you're getting crazy, I think I'll I'll give you a ten. But how do you judge that if one guy's doing like a crooked gr- like a switch crooked grind, and the other guy's doing some other trick like a regular five zero on a rail? How do you judge that? You know, I I think it has to do with style and how you're doing the maneuver. And uh, how many difficulty tricks you're doing your, was it 60 second run? Or mm-hmm. Is that what it is? Yeah. Well, I guess. I don't know. And uh, But I think skateboard competitions are, are different now with the street league and they do it differently. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, our one friend, Andrew, right? That's his name? At- Shout out to our good buddy, Andrew Nicholas. Yeah. I, he, we bring him up a lot. He's he's a good dude. Super nice guy. Yeah. And it was really cool that he gave you guys some uh, Scissor Bro yeah, skateboards. Scissor Bro skateboards right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think you, you were there. I was there. So uh, we at Jeremiah's party, we talked for about two hours. And he was saying the problem that they were having that was so hot there that the boards, the glue in the boards was melting. Yeah. I, it's crazy. It's and then he goes, "I'm from Arizona," and it was like really, really hot. And it's right. like I've been to the, along the equator, and yeah. it's brutal. It's brutal. It's and brutal. you brought up uh, the, the the Japanese phenom Yuto Origami. Oh, that kid's insane. I mean, talk about just a machine an artist. Yeah, I mean the the guy. He's 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 just mind blowing, isn't he? I just some of the stuff he does and the consistency and on a like, run on his runs. Runs and probably when he's just skating with his friends too, you know. And you know they got they they got me and Jeremiah into the barracks. Oh, and I got scared because I thought he was kidding around. Because I met him playing Warzone. Mm. I met him playing Warzone. Oh wow! And Instagram. I I looked at his Instagram. I'm like, oh, he's a solid skater. I like yeah. this. And then I thought I didn't know his affiliations, what he did. And then he brought it up. He's like, hey, if you want, we could get you guys into the barracks. I'm like, yeah. In my mind, I'm like, yeah, right. I thought he was fucking around. And you guys got, and Yuto got you in? No, no, or no, Andrew? no, no. He picked me up one night. Like it was at 830. He's like, dude, let's go. And I go, really? He picks me up. And then he gets on a, a FaceTime call and it's Yuto. Oh, wow. And so I literally started like, Morphing to the right side of the wind, I was just like, oh. and I just, because yeah, uh, yeah, I was like, oh, he's not kidding around. Wow. And then he, this is the way he set it up. He's like, okay, yeah, it's just gonna be you, me, Yuto, and uh, Deshaun join. I go really, and I hadn't skate. You know, I don't skate. I skate to Seven Eleven or here. I mean, I don't skate like that anymore. Like do, or try. Do you skate to your that uh, shoe store right up the street? Well, yeah. Well, the one up there. St- well, is that a spot? Well, it's just not a spot. It's but a parking lot. It was parking. It's a nice big parking lot, but just to get shoes. Yeah, I've gotten sliders there. Yeah, I get shoes there too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he got me there. Thank God, Uto didn't show up that night, but Deshaun did. Well, 
Yeah, but uh, yeah, going back to you, too, they, the, well, how, why, how are these, I mean, these Japanese kids, uh, they, even this they new dominated. kid, Jin Woo, there's, there's this new kid, Jin Woo. 11 years old something in the water or something i don't know in okinawa like there's something going on in japan there's, there's something going on maybe it's the the radiation from fukushima <laughs> i don't know <laughs> we might have to edit that part out <laughs> i hope not but they're just evolving like no other man they're they're machines they're machines out there right i i yuto is probably one of my favorite skaters he's just consistent it's amazing yeah how old is that kid i don't know his age i've never met him Oh, you've never met him. No, I've just seen him on, you know, TV and... Yeah. Or should I say YouTube? I mean, when he won the gold, that... I mean, when you win the first gold medal in it's skateboarding, incredible. dude... Like, I, he's new to this career, too, and, and he's just dominating. And when companies like Louis Vuitton is... They're hollering. I mean, he's <laughs> like... Companies like that are, I think, hollering. Are they really? Yeah, Good dude. Good for him. Gucci, Louis Vuitton. Yeah. Just, I hope he's just raking in the cash. I think he is. And investing I mean, it correctly. That's the thing. Uh, let's talk about that because you've been around pro skaters. Like, they, they, I mean, as far as investing in finance, uh, back in the 90s, they weren't the best at like saving their money, right? Or, I think some were. You know, not everyone was a party animal. and. But, I mean, the ones that party, they just kind of got lost in the sauce, would you say? Maybe, yeah. yeah. There's definitely uh, people like that and just... You know, I think it happens with a lot of things, you know, there's like there's been jobs where I've done where we travel around the world and we would party every night, you know, go out and get drunk. And so you didn't get it that deep. In a, did you just smoke weed and drink beer or something? Or? At that time, I don't even do that now. So. So, so you're straight at like just. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Straight. So back then, the worst was just drinking a beer and maybe yeah, smoking a joint or something. It. Yeah. I never did anything else. You didn't get into that. There's no cocaine involved or never did it. Okay. Yeah. But what do you say in skateboarding? Those are the two main drugs, just weed and beer? Sure. I mean, I mean, others dabble in probably other substances. I don't know. It's But but that doesn't last long, you know? And mm -hmm. it's just good to stay true with what you're really into and flourish, you know? Yeah. How does... I always wondered this as, like, because as far as the, the way their careers went, like how long is one's lifespan or like career span in, in pro professional skateboarding? It just depends on the person. If they're going to be a party animal, it's not going to last very long. I don't think, you know, but it just, you know, if you're a phenomenon like soy or, you know, or Nija, Nija. Yeah. But you know, it's just, you gotta be careful, you know? And I think you should just be true to yourself and just do what you can. And, not be a fuck up, you know? Right, right. And then, like, when a pro, like, retires, they could get other jobs within the industry, like maybe being a team manager or stuff like that? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, sure, that's what you want to do if you want to be the babysitter. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, what, that's what you are. That's what it is. Pretty much. Yeah, you have to drop, pick them up in the van or something? or. I don't know. I think skateboarding is just so different now than it was when I was involved. And Do you like it where it's gone? You know, it's not mine to say, you know, but yeah. it's exciting. But I just hear stories how hard it is for these kids to make money from it. How do you not, though? Like, it's just the way it is. You can't make money, money. No, you can't really make money any, well, sustained from board sales. Yeah, I was just going to say, did they used to make money on board sales, right? You used like a, to. But now if you get a shoe deal, then that's you're OK. But otherwise, you're just kind of doing it for the fun. Or if Red Bull hollers at you. And you or get a monster that, drink, yeah, or a mo uh, energy or drink, whatever and you get else. That five to seven thousand dollars. Maybe the check. Rock will start sponsoring people. The what? The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> He's got an energy drink now, right? Okay, shout out to the Rock. Yeah, yeah. the Rock starts sponsoring skaters. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Or um, X Games were like street league and stuff like that, right? I don't know. Well, like maybe. the competition. Thing. I, I heard the the prize purse isn't as high as it used to be. So really? yeah, that's what someone told me, and so. What do you think about YouTube skaters? Like, the, you know, uh, people that have their own YouTube channel, then they make their own board. I, mean, I think it's great. The more power to them, right? Exactly. I think they're 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 taking what never once existed and running with it. And and they're it's, creating they're it. They're creating their own destiny, and that's amazing. Their own channel. They their can upload channel. their own content. It's amazing. Like, so you're for that? 100%. I like that. I like that. I like that. Like, like you got your own channel? I got yeah. my own channel. Yeah. Do you have a channel? Yeah. Oh, well. Can you shout out there? Your, and yeah, shout it out again. Um, Rick Cossack Films. 
Rick Kosick Films at YouTube. Mm -hmm. Please follow me today. Um, so what kind of content do you have on your channel? Well, right now I have various different videos, but I'm starting a, uh, a series that I'm test running. It's called Relentless Ones. What's that about? It's about people who are have a passion in or uh, right now I'm building a story on a, a friend of mine who survived a kidney transplant. Damn. And so we're talking about the after fact of surviving and what he's kind of gone through. And, and he was my boxing trainer. So, wow. so, uh, so yeah, there like mini documentaries or interviews. Yeah, just a little five minute, you know, five minute videos. You yeah. Know? And uh, I did another one of my buddy who has a radio station. Uh, he's a DJ at KXLU, mm -hmm. and so I did a story on him. It's a little bit more built out. Mm -hmm. And then I did my first one with Joel Jimenez. Oh, shout out to the homie jo Joel Jimenez. Yeah. 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 And so, um, yeah, that's on my channel. So please. Check it out, like it. So there are many, there are many like five to ten minute documentaries. Just yeah, if you want to call it a little little five minute, little burners. Cool. And then uh, is and then there th is it interview style. Sit down interview style with footage of what they what they're doing, and what they've gone through like sort of. So yeah. they don't have to be like skaters or it could be no, anyone. it's gonna be anyone. It's gonna everyone's gonna be different. Wow. So what? Who would you want to like? Did you do you have you interviewed Spike? No, I'm not going to do him. He's no, too, no, he's too big. I want to do people who are kind of on the, the come The up. underground, the underground. Yeah, and yeah. there's so many people in our world that are pursuing great things, and I want to showcase that. Yeah, and what? Uh, so this is interesting. What other types of content as well, uh, besides the relentless ones? Uh, some music videos. and Music so, videos. Yeah. and That the, you directed and mm, filmed yeah, and all? Yeah. Can you give us some examples of some of the bands? Uh, this group called Film. Okay. Uh, House Broken Promises. Keep going, yep. I uh, did a video for, um, oh man, I had to open up my phone. And it's, it's fine, but. Whatever, check it so out. So there's music videos, there's interviews. Yeah, and then, you know, I, I just, I kind of got my page set up really, you know, so it's got all the podcasts I've ever appeared on. And oh, different tiers or different. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. It's pretty chronological and it's right, easy. Everything, right, right. Everything's really clean and easy to find. That's cool. So in the future, like, what would you want to do eventually? Do maybe do an independent film to, to film yeah, making? Yeah, well, I'm looking to probably, you know, I want to sell this concept to a network this year. Oh, oh this, by the way, well, this, this, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. well, by the way, Happy New Year. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming. This is it. This yeah, video this will it. come out in the new year, correct? Yeah, yeah, correct. So happy correct. new year. Happy new year. Yeah. What do you? Th what are your thoughts? It's 2022, man. I mean, Jeez. it's just, would you say it's just flying by? I mean. It's flying by and we're all sitting at home watching it go by. Yeah, I just, it's a weird time right now with even with the COVID thing and. I know, it New sucks. strands of these things and would you say people are more paranoid now and like it's like becoming everything's becoming political as far as like you know like anti-vaxxers versus vax you know shit's yeah, crazy it's man. it's bizarre yeah. i think the problem is is there's social media now and everyone's educated by it so it's creating more division dividing you know and it's like oh i learned this from this guy and it's like it might not be true mm. you know i'm sure back in 1918 when there's the spanish flu no one was going anywhere to figure out. They everyone had a mask up, yeah, and get through it. And then when they took their mask off, millions of people died. Right, a that's lot the, of people. Yeah, died. that's real talk right there. And yeah. it's like, yeah. It's so just, I mean, I'm not saying follow no. the CDC guidelines or anything. Do what you want, you know. But it's just, it's, it's kind of. Yeah, it's just I just get frustrated time. because I know people who have passed away from it. Yeah, I just saw a documentary last night on YouTube, and it's just like you know, it's like it took place in a Phoenix hospital, like yeah. ICU. And it's it's a real. I mean, dude, it's like it, it, it's showing it. Like, yeah, and I, I there's people I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put them on blast, but no, I you follow, don't have to. You don't I'm have put to. Them on, they, these are my friends I follow on social media, and they just carry on like it's just they're making fun of everyone, and, I, and it offends me. You know, and it's Whoa, like wait, 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 what? Yeah, they they like. They they'll go in a grocery store. They don't wear a mask, and they'll, they'll they're, they're kind of clowning people. And I, I hate, it's like fuck you. Like like prank type videos. No, or? they're not prank. No, they're, this, this is real. This is real. It's and not a prank. No, not a prank. And they're just like they just think they're smarter than everyone else. Like ah oh, ha ha! Look at you, you you sheep. You know. Yeah, you know you know the weird thing. And this is like the most confusing thing because there's so much information out there. There's oh, so many much. videos. There's so much content. There's mm -hmm. so many. 
It's like, how do you even know which one is the real shit? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. one person might watch one video and be like, see, dude, like, yeah, I know. here's my proof. And then another person would be like, I saw this other video. See, this is the truth. It's like. I had a buddy of mine call me the other day because he read some new book that dropped. I'm not going to reveal the title. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have no, to even drop the dude's like, name. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it was just like, yeah. I had to wake up to an earful of conspiracy stuff. And I'm just like. Man, I ain't even taking a shit yet today. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. On, on like on what like UFO alien shit or no? But all about the vaccinations. Oh, okay. I mean, it's just like, dude. Because I'm like, into the alien UFO. I like that stuff. I, you know what? I'm into, I want science fiction. You know, Star Trek. I listen, like that stuff. I'm disappointed. I really thought there'd be a big reveal by now of UFOs. It's it's bound to happen. There's too much evidence. I mean, like, I mean, just Linda Moulton Howe. Shout out to my. My sensei, Linda Moulton Howe, um, she has a, a, a great platform called Earth Files on YouTube every Wednesday. And, man, she's interviewed, like, lieutenants from, like, the from the Navy or the Air Force. They're underground bunkers. Like, there's proof of abductions and cattle abductions and mutilations. And What was that one movie that they did, the cattle mutilation, that they, the helicopters came along and they scooped up the, the cattle and they did all these tests on it? Oh, that's they, interesting. I forgot about that remember one. Remember that movie? I don't think I saw that one. It was like, man, you had to. It was like on TV like every other month back when we were kids. Oh, the one I remember is V, The Final Battle. It was pretty creepy, I remember. Because remember the reptile that, that was about, those reptilians were in that. No. V, that, you remember V? I don't, I, I don't remember. Okay, v. well, shout out to V, The Final Battle. Yeah. You know what new Bev's showing this month? Yeah, go ahead. Let's do some positive uh They're showing reviews. video they're doing Videodrome. Oh. They're showing Videodrome this month at the new Bev. In January. So okay. yeah, in January. All right, and then and describe what that is to our younger viewers. It's a old eighties <laughs> movie with Debbie Harry. Yeah. And it's just this I don't know how to describe it. It's just it's it's kind of corny at the end, but it's, yeah. but it's that's how films were back. Yeah. It, it's just a trippy film. Okay, since you brought that up again, I, I like talking about film again. Let's because we're getting to the last thirteen minutes, something like that, right, Charles? Yes. What are some of your most favorite or influential films ever? Like, just name three to five. Wow. That's, yeah. I'm gonna think, we're gonna have to sit here for thirteen minutes while I think about that. Well, can I? Uh, do you want me to get it started? Sure. Okay. So for me, it's uh, definitely there will be blood. Ooh. There will be blood. Um, taxi driver. Okay, that's a good one. Um. God, I, I love Goodfellas so much. It's that's one of those. Can I can I chime in right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted. All Go right. Ahead. So ahead. I like uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. You know what? I, you know what I'm talking about, man. Um, Rest in peace, Gene Wilder. Um, yeah, incredible. You, that Blazing one, right? Saddles. Yeah. Woo! Now you're talking. <laughs> yeah. Now you're talking. Uh, I have Gene right there, man. Oh, yeah. I saw that at the New Bev. Yeah. I've never seen that movie. Stir uh, crazy? You ain't gonna go stir crazy in there? Yeah, well, I don't know. Come on, man. Just throw it in there. Blazing Saddles. Okay. It's got yeah, Richard Pryor. Good, uh, yeah. So did Stir Crazy. Yeah, I know, yeah. but that was yeah. a good movie. Yeah. So those. Those two, there's so many. I can't really. I, I'd have to think about it a second. I had to. I had a list at one point written out. Any like, a, a Kurosawa, Kurosawa films like Dreams or Seventh Samurai? Any of, or uh, mm. Korean filmmakers or Korean. I like, I films? like Parasite. Shout out to Parasite. Damn good film. Did you watch uh, Squid Games? Yeah, I did. What'd you think of it? Um, I'm not gonna. Get crazy and be like, it's the best thing ever made. It was fucking dark. It was. You but, know what I liked about it? Because it, it talked about like human behavior, human psychology. What would one do when their backs are against the wall? Like, you know, people are nice every day, you know, you I, know, in I normal saw, life. But what happens when you're in those that scenario where it's life or death? It felt like watching a Tarantino film because you have like this dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. You brought that up. And then boom, like this big combustive ending every episode. Yeah. Since you brought Tarantino up, yeah. will you at least name a few? Because I just saw Inglorious oh, Bastards dude, last Death night. Proof, Death Proof is like one of my favorite films. Yeah, banger, banger. Love that. I've seen it like six times. Yeah. I've seen it at the New Bev like four times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, Name two more of his. Oh. Inglorious well, Bastards, Bastards was good. That was, was a damn good movie. The dialogue. The, the Hateful acting. Eight. Damn good, damn good. Um, Pulp Fiction was a classic, right? I mean, that's... That's got to be in my top 10. What about Kill Bill 1 and 2? I mean, it's so hard with him. 
I know. They're so fun. Hard. They're he, fun movies. Yeah. He's probably actually one of my favorite directors ever. Did you like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? I did. I, I mean, I it wasn't. I didn't like it as much as Reservoir Dogs or some of the other ones. Okay. But, uh, I mean, Reservoir Dogs was a classic too. I mean, yeah, that's they're... a damn good movie. Damn good movie. Shout out to Tim Roth. He doesn't get enough love as well. Like people forget Tim. Tim Roth is an actor. I, I like Tim Roth. People forgot about him. I forgot. I don't even know who he is. <laughs> Tim Roth. <laughs> Mr. Wyatt. You know. Yeah. So, we'll, we'll edit that out too. <laughs> yeah. So, like, as far as like future endeavors, like future projects, or like anything you wanted to kind of. Well, well, right yeah, now we're getting ready to, to have plug. the the release of Jackass Forever is coming up. When's that coming out? It's supposed to be February fourth, I think. And it's fifth d- or yeah, it's been. It's done. ready to go. Hot, ready to go on the projector at your local yeah. theater. I didn't mean to get controversial, but is Bam involved at all? No. That bums me because I want you know as a fan I would you know yeah I know I know, it, I know it, it got... upset everyone but you know he I can't say too much I know I know it, yeah. but we'll it's leave just, it at that. Just, we'll leave it that yeah. you know he's not going to be involved but um it's unfortunate but yeah he... it's unfortunate so get your tickets for Jackass go to the premiere is there going to be a premiere I hope so I don't know right now mm-hmm. honestly I don't know I'm sure there's going to be some gnarly stunts oh there is gnarly. <laughs> And it's just fun. It's a really fun film, and yeah. I I laughed a lot. And so I, you were how involved were you? Were you you were involved actually on screen, but like as far as behind the scenes editorial stuff or anything I, like that? No, because of COVID, I wasn't allowed to go into editing bay. I mean, that would have been dope. I used to go every film. I was sitting in the editing yeah, bay, yeah, in the watch, dock, in the room, yeah, and watching. Oh, can we check out my shot here? You know, like you can, you 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 did that all the time. <sighs> you know, and so. Sweet. But I got to go to a uh, sound mix session. I got to watch the entire film with with Jeff and Spike, and I was just so blown away by how good it looked. It looked uh, crispy, <sighs> amazing. I I got mm-hmm. my card. I called. I'm like, man, I'm so proud to be a part of this. Yeah. This looks so good, and I'm, I'm just I can't believe that this. I got to do this again. You how know? many did they make? Uh, this is the fourth one. This is the well, it'd be the fifth with Bad Grandpa. Right, right, right. Now, is Spike a nice guy? I'm a fan of his. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. Yeah, because I like his uh, his music video, like with the stuff he did with the Beastie Boys, Beastie Farside, Boys, Far Side, and, and the movies he's created. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah he's did very... he do uh, Being John Malkovich? Is that him? Yes. Is, okay. He's done some amazing things. Yeah, amazing stuff. Um, now, is there anything else you wanted to? Can we start plugging? Uh, you like if you have a website, uh, your, your YouTube again, your Instagram or Twitter, whatever you want to do. Yeah, you know, all will you put the links in the the, the for right? you? I will. Thank you. I don't normally do that, but for you, I will. I'll put your Instagram and Instagram, whatever you want me to do. Twitter, I Twitter. I'm on everywhere. Can you spell out your name? Like they might spell your name wrong. The, the Rick R I C K K O S I C K. Dude, it was an honor having you. By Thank the you. way, um. I wanted to meet you in the worst way, and when I saw you, when I, um, <laughs> when I, when I walked in, I, I met you, but it was so brief at the comedy store. Yeah, that but was when I weird... met you, at, when I met you at Jeremiah's, I felt like okay, I had the right sit down with you, you and. Yeah, Andrew. it was fun. That was a really fun yeah, little get together. That, that was a fun night, wasn't it? Yeah, it was his birthday. Yeah, shout out to Jeremiah again. That's so that's... you're going on the road with him soon, right? Yeah, we have some. Uh, okay, we have some Scissor Bros. Uh, Live podcast dates. Yo, why do you, why why'd you ask? Uh, just out of curiosity or curiosity, and just to help plug your. Thank the, you. I appreciate yeah. that. I appreciate that. You know what? You know what that and I like. I know we're kind of winding down, but it's such a new thing as well. It's because like stand up is one thing, right? Yeah. Watching a stand up act, but like for a live perf- for a live show just to be a podcast, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Right. Because I know, like, because when I ask Jeremiah, because I'm always like in my head, are we doing a good job? But he he just says, dude, just act as if we're just filming a normal. But it's that's you could say that, but dude, there's a live audience right there, so it's yeah. not going to be like how you know. I'll give you this for an example, like you know how we're shooting the shit we have been for the last hour. Imagine if people were just sitting down around us. I would be It's going to change. That's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, my God. But I can handle it. After a while, you get in a groove of it. And you're but like, it yeah. changes the conversation, doesn't it? Yeah. It becomes it, more the, of an, what do we say? It's more performance. It's a performance. What, he doesn't say that? 
No, but it becomes that. It 100% is. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to be sounding like, I don't know, Jeremiah. Mm. You know, you want to put out, project, and like, it's How energy. you guys doing? You guys having a good time? Like, Come on, have, everyone. Yeah, you have to do <laughs> Exactly. exactly. <laughs> you okay? We'll keep that one in. <laughs> but, you, but you know what I mean? It becomes that. Like, you guys you guys ready for our challenge? You know, it, yeah. it's not like just us talking. Right. So going back to, yes, get your tickets. It's going to be on our social medias and websites, whatever. But we are. it is a show. I got to come to a Scissor Bros live taping one of these days. Oh, we got to bring you on stage to, to, to get oh, involved oh, with it. Oh, well, I'm not going to do a challenge or something. I'll be the, the judge. Do you know a kid in Missouri... Broke his finger. Ooh, see, I'm not. See, that's dangerous. We did a going back to Squid Games. Mm. We did a Squid Game three part challenge, and one of the uh, one of the sections was a tug of war. Gotta be careful. This kid wrapped uh, his mm. finger like this. Uh, you know, because normally you would just wrap your wrist uh, around it, right? What is he doing? And then. He was on my team, uh, so shout out to Jimmy. I hope you're recovering well. Yeah. I hope you got the care package. Um, and we're doing it, and then everyone, he's like, "Oh!" And then his finger was literally like pointing the other way. I thought, I thought it was like a hoax. I'm like, "What did Jeremiah?" Because you know, Jeremiah, you know, we do so jackass painful. type stuff. But I'm like, "This is a joke." But then literally, they, we had to stop the the pop, the live show. It's like, hold hold it here, get the the medic in. Yeah. <laughs> So we'll be mindful for future uh, Scissor Bro challenges. It's not going to be that gnarly like that. Just we're bring gonna... some milk and cookies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to add that. We're going to keep that in there. We're going to have a great time. It was an honor having you. Yeah, you're I right. got to do a couple shout outs too. Um, so I'll plug the Scissor Bro live podcast dates in the YouTube description. Go to stevieweebyshow.com for any of the merch. Uh, go to scissorbros.com. I mean, youtube.com slash scissorbros. Uh, did you plug your Instagram, by the way? So it's Instagram. It's everything at Rick Kosick. And that's uh, K-O-S-I-C-K. My Instagram's, Instagram's uh, Q-U-A-N-G-O-U, Kwong U, uh, stevieweebybandcamp.com. I also have uh, a newer project, a music project on Spotify. Just type in Q U A N G O U. Um, subscribe to the Scissor Bros channel. Subscribe to this channel. Um, and I think, did we cover everything? I, I think, think that's about it, man. Oh, did that fly? Go ahead, go ahead. And my other favorite movie is Die Hard. You know what, bro? Let me tell you something. <laughs> that's a damn good movie. Yeah, I just watched it the other night. I watch it every couple months. I watch it at Christmas. Can I throw another one in there? <laughs> oh, you did? Good for you. Oh, because that happened during Christmas. They had the party. Yeah, Christmas The, the company party. Yeah. Um, First Blood. Oh. Rambo First Blood. Loved all those movies. Damn good movie. Oh, Apocalypse Now. Okay, now we're... Damn good movie. Yeah. It was long. It yes, was long, long, but you know, shout out to Lawrence Fishburne mm -hmm. as well. I mean, you know, there a young Lawrence Fish Fishburne's in that movie. Heck yeah! Okay, a lot of young guys were in that movie. Yeah, damn good. Oh, who's uh Outsiders? Dennis Hopper. Yeah, Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper was the photographer. Yeah, outside. Say that. Yeah, the Outsiders. Francis yeah. Ford Coppola's and it had I, such a crazy ensemble of all these young. I mean, and Tom Cruise, Rob Lowe, Patrick Swayze, on and on and on. on, and on. Uh, Emilio Estevez. Yeah, I saw that at the New Bev too. Yeah, that's got to be one of the best movies ever oh made. Oh my God! Here's another. Great oh, movie. Matt Dillon. Yes, Matt Dillon. Can't forget about Matt Dillon. I have another Rumble great, Fish. Before we wrap this up, I got this great new. Now you're stuff. coming up with the movie stuff. <laughs> yes, We're sorry. wrapping up here, but throw a couple other ones. Right. Go ahead. Nah, well, maybe you can cut this back. No, 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 no. We're keeping everything in, right? All right. <laughs> nah, that's no, 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 no. Please do it. 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 So I'm at the new Bev watching um, the Blues Brothers Midnight Screening. Dan Aykroyd. So and then the, the guy, every every showing, the guy comes out who runs the theater is like, hey, all right. Thanks for coming to the new Bev. We got a special guest. And he introduces Quentin Tarantino. So he comes out and it's like. All right, cool. And then Quentin's like all like animated crazy. He goes, I got a special surprise for you guys. I'm going to introduce you to the producer of the film, writer Dan Aykroyd. And the whole theater is just jumped up screaming. 
And so you quit. must have brought up the new Bev three times during this. It's podcast. insane. It just Let's just can we plug it again? It, it was it was on it's on it was on Fairfax. It's on Fairfax. Right? No, it's on Bev. It's on Bev. Okay, I, thought, I thought it was like the the one. Uh, didn't he buy the one on Fairfax too? No, he okay. bought the one. Sorry, thanks the, for the clarifying. One on the east side. The oh, okay, uh, the gotcha, Vista. gotcha. Uh, the, Vista, the Vista, Vista in uh, Silver Lake. Mm-hmm. The new Bev Theater. That's Tarantino's theater. Yes, it is. Um and. And you can watch the nostalgic movies. It's all projected in 35 millimeter. Wow. And definitely go support that once this is all this COVID stuff. Yeah. Done. I mean, they're they're showing, but I haven't been there in a year because yeah. it's been kind of weird. I'm glad you brought up uh, Die Hard and, and Outsiders. There's so many. There's it's just so like, many. It's just like, next thing you know, I'm, I'm going to be uh, driving home like, gosh, dang it, I didn't mention this film. No, that's fine. All you right. can always have part two, part three, part four, part five. Um, thanks for tuning in. We made an hour. Well, thanks for having me as Dude, a guest. anytime, brother. Super I'm so glad boy. we met. Okay, till next time.